The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Thursday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. And boy, we got some strong GDP data, 3.3% for the fourth quarter of 2023. You're talking about growth on a yearly basis. When you look at the entire year, 2023, 2.5% growth for the GDP. Not what many expected, to put it lightly, if you go back 12 months ago. Nonetheless, this, this economy marches on. And uh, pretty decent data when you look at the inflation data as well. We'll get to it in a moment. We take a look at markets this morning. We accelerate higher on that strong number from the GDP. Up about 17 points on the S&P right now. Trading at 49.15. You're up about a third of a percent. NASDAQ 100, we're up by 82 points right now. That's about half a percent the positive, 17,704. You get the Dow right now, up 77 points, 38,055. See a little volatility in both directions as we get some earnings, we get some different economic news. You had the ECB with their press conference right as I was coming on the air as well. So we got some action in currencies, of course, yields. Russell, up by 25 points, 1.3% in the positive. You jump over to Bitcoin, hovering right at about 40,000. You were down to 38,540 on Tuesday. We've been chopping around between about 39 and 40,000 this week. Crude continuing to rise up $1.12 at 76.21 right now. You jump over to gold up about $4 at 2020. You see a little bit of a spike at 8.30 on that news. Not really. Uh, there was just one little tail. Might have been a couple trades there. But nonetheless, gold jumps around. We're at 2020 right now. And you jump to notes and bonds. And what do we got? We got higher price. And we got lower yield coming at you, man. We got the yield. Uh, excuse me. We have, yes, higher price and lower yield. We are back to 4.14 right now. Quite a drop off yesterday, though, right? What was going on yesterday, man? We got some movement. You got lower price and higher yield. You had the market pulling back. We just got action all over this market. You jump over to the dollar index. Dollar right now up about 12 pennies, 103.35. You jump over to the VIX when the market just keeps going up. 12.41 yesterday before we got a little bit of a sell-off to 13. We're sitting at 13.12 right now on the VIX. Slightly elevated volatility premium when you look at how this market is reacting. We will see how we do on the open. But let's take a look at that GDP data. And there's your headline, man. U.S. GDP grew 3.3% last quarter, capping an unexpectedly strong year. The economy for all of 2023, as I mentioned, expanded 2.5%. When you look at personal spending, that number, 2.8%, driving a lot of the action. When you're looking for inflation, personal consumption expenditure, 2%, same as it was a quarter ago. These are the important numbers right here, man. GDP, 3.3%. The number they were looking for was 2. Let me even blow it up. Because these are the numbers, folks. Personal consumption, 2.8. They knew it was going to be a hot number that was going to drive GDP. We talked about it a little bit yesterday in terms of personal consumption, the GDP number. That estimate was for 2.5. It comes in at 2.8. Personal consumption, expenditure, price index, excluding food and energy at 2%. That's a nice magic number, man. That's the, that's the magic number that the Fed is looking for, right? 2%. Estimate, 2%. That's where it was last quarter as well. Pretty remarkable as we march forward here. Initial jobless claims rose 25,000 last week to 214,000. Continuing claims also slightly increasing. And uh, yeah, strong numbers across the board, man. All right, where do we go to next? We got to go to Tesla, right? We got to get to Tesla, man, early in the program. Tesla shares, looks like we're continuing to slide. Boy, so we had some tantalizing. If you were up early this morning, Dan Ives from Webbush, he was on Bloomberg. Boy, he had some strong words, man. And he um, he has some great takes. He's been all over Apple for a while, okay? And uh, yeah, this is this is this is the when did this come out? Okay, uh, six thirty-eight this morning. Yeah, and I think it was kind of what he was talking about on Bloomberg. Here's the quote, man. Here's the quote, okay? 
This is just one analyst, folks, okay? But encapsulate, and he is still bullish on EV, okay? He's still bullish on EV. He's still got a price target of 315 down from about 350 on Tesla for some context here. It's currently trading at 189. So this is the take from somebody who's looking at Tesla at 189 and says it could trade to 315. He says it could be a trillion dollar company still in the next two to three years or something like that. But his point was short term here, we are at a train wreck, okay? We were dead wrong expecting Musk and his team to step up like adults in the room and give a strategic and financial overview of the ongoing price cuts, margin structure, and fluctuating demand. Instead, we got a high-level view with another train wreck conference call for the street price target to 315, okay? And what he was talking about here is light on details. And it was probably just, uh, and I didn't catch the conference call, folks, but it was probably a very typical call in Musk fashion, right? In terms of grandiose, they're talking about producing a low-cost vehicle sometime in the future. Uh, one of the things they said, they caught a lot of headlines. Uh, let's see if I can find it because he was talking about, here it is. That's going to be the headline. Chinese EV makers will pretty much demolish most competitors without trade barriers. Well, that's an interesting thing to say as the CEO of an electric vehicle maker that's doing business in China and across the world. And those trade barriers aren't in place just yet, right? Yeah. And he may be right, but that doesn't mean that's going to be a good thing for his share price, man. Um, yeah. So I was reading a little bit about this last night. You know, you got BYD out there. They're the biggest EV maker in the world now, and they're coming for tesla and uh we talked about in the beginning of the program that what are they doing i mean byd they got up and down the line now they're going to be producing a hundred and fifty thousand dollar vehicle that looks like a lamborghini they're going to be producing everything to compete with tesla and boy you're opening at 190 right now and 190 on this chart where do we stop i mean as a technical trader you know 190 on this chart what's in the way of this thing getting down to 100 that's kind of the worrisome fact here for a short-term trading duration. When you look at what's going on, you see the slide continuing this morning. You're down $17 right now. What's that pushing? 8% pullback on this equity at 190. And yes, they have some issues going forward, folks. And they're still dealing with some pretty lofty multiples. And um, yeah, I'd be a little skeptical because remember how quickly things can get out of whack on some of these equities as they have some problems, to put it lightly, man. Going to be an interesting open for Tesla shares. All right, back to a short-term chart. What else we got going on? We jumped to Southwest. So Southwest, out with their numbers. They're going to be up about a dollar. What I found interesting about Southwest, though, is you jump over to Boeing shares. So Boeing's going to open down another six bucks. This one's not done yet, folks. Down to 201.78 last night. You're bouncing a bit. Yeah, boy, we got a lot to talk about, man. I got to find all these articles quickly because I got too many of them pulled up right now. There it is. Southwest Airlines takes Boeing Max 7 out of the 2024 plans because of certification delays. Now, the Boeing 737 MAX is the smallest model, as they put it here, in the 737 MAX family that has not yet been certified by the FAA, okay? But Southwest, the latest airline to rethink its fleet of planes because of certification delays. Now, we heard from United earlier in the week, right? Um, Bowie's got some issues, man. Um, we heard United talking about the straw that broke the camel's back, man. Because guess what? They get the biggest fleet of those 737 Max that are grounded, and they're running into some issues. It's going to be an interesting Thursday, folks. Stay tuned. We're coming back. Talking to our man Kevin Hinks from the Schwab Network. Don't go away, folks. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, 
you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up by 19 points right now. You got the NASDAQ 100 up almost 100. We got green across the board with some strong GDP data this morning to talk about some of the market action, folks. Let's talk to our man, Kevin Hinks, from the Schwab Network. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time, fast market from the Schwab Network right here on Tiger TV. Don't forget to check it out. We're in earnings season, and let's jump right into it. Kevin, what do you think of the GDP numbers this morning, man? Strong numbers as this market marches on. Yeah, the, you know, I'll, I'll tell you, when you look at the numbers, they're strong. They're less than a quarter ago, right, 4.9% versus 3.3%. Personal consumption expenders, 3.1% versus 2.8%. So they're, the overall number's coming down, but there's some cautionary numbers inside these numbers, Tommy, and that is this is this GDP number. This U.S. economy right now is all about the labor market and the U.S. consumer spending money, Tommy. Look, look, here's the numbers that are, I'm talking about. Personal income this quarter increased from 220, from 196 billion to 224 billion, quarter three to quarter four. So personal income higher. Disposable personal income higher from 143 billion to 211 billion, right? Income higher, disposable income higher. Personal savings lower from $851 billion to $818 billion. Personal savings rate as a percent of personal income from 4.2% down to 4%. So income, personal income higher, disposable income higher, savings lower, and per savings rate lower, Tommy. This is a economy right now being fueled by the U.S. consumer spending money. That's why I love talking to you, man, breaking down some of those numbers uh, below that top line number that we always get. And, uh, you know, it's just relentless action to the upside in this market. We're nearing 5,000 in the futures, Kevin. Um, we got the VIX flirting with maybe 13, a little bit of a sell-off to the end of the day. Uh, where, where, Where's your mind in this market right now, I guess? You know, the million-dollar question. We got some lofty levels. We can get into Tesla in a moment if you want. But, boy, we got some big numbers here, and there's some pretty big expectations when you're dealing with an S&P approaching 5,000 right now. 
Um, a lot of optimism kind of, you know, priced into this market at these levels where we see green across the board. Does this give you with the numbers you're laying out even right there? Does it give you any pause maybe or how are you kind of approaching this market as we go forward six, day from, six days from the next Fed meeting? The valuations, my, my, my first thought is how long can this last, Tommy? The valuations are high. Uh, the economic data is high. The dollar was down. Now it's higher. I, I'm I'm not sure how uh, yeah. bonds are higher and yields are lower this morning based on this data. So yeah, I think there's a couple red flags out there in the market. But we'll get personal consumption expenditure number tomorrow, year over year PCE and core PCE. Those numbers. If all this is going on and inflation's coming down, uh, that's a pretty good narrative. However. Yeah. Tommy, and here's what your viewers should understand. Soft landing. The idea of a soft landing is a great idea, great term. The only problem is it's never happened, right? And the problem with, a, with an economy that's softening and coming down is how do you get it to come to 2% and stop, right? This is the problem because normally it just keeps going. And years ago, not that long ago, we were desperately trying to get GDP from or inflation from one and a half, one point six to two percent. So, a tightrope on this one, Tommy. Yeah, it's a, it's a great um, mental exercise that you're putting us through, and that's what I try and you know work my head around because. It seems like everything's going so great, like you say, man, um, but we got some ways to go, and we know that last mile. And like you said, I mean, um, the trajectory, right? How does that trajectory stop on that number? We're going to find out. Out, man and then it is interesting you know i'm hearing this morning it's like boy things are so hot what's going to happen as we go forward three six nine or twelve months we're going to be dealing with some pretty awesome comps on a gdp basis when you're talking about 4.9 3.3 just big numbers on a yearly and we'll see if the economy can maintain it as we go forward man uh what do you think about tesla tough deal for tesla last night you're down a little bit this morning elon facing a little bit of heat what, what are you what are your feelings on tesla with a little, little negative action this morning I didn't listen. I, I saw the earnings come out. I did not listen to the conference call, but it sounds like Elon Musk did not get a good grade from his conference call. Right. Uh, I didn't either. Yeah. I think that's why the stock is under pressure. He didn't. Yeah. Um, he, he wasn't very enthusiastic. So I, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to watch what Tesla does. I think, you know, Tesla's changing autos in, in general. Tesla. So they're the clear leader in EVs, but then the question is, how important are EVs going forward? So Tesla's at a key level here in its history, that's for sure. It's going to be interesting to see if the the um, the China, the U.S. talking about Elon, and probably rightfully so, man, saying, listen, China's coming for everybody unless we have some type of, you know, whatever it is, trading curbs or whatever it is. That conversation, he's starting it last night, and we'll see if that persists. Uh, with that, Kevin, we march forward, man. We got more numbers coming out after the bell tonight. You mentioned some economic data out tomorrow as well. Do you guys have any equities you're talking about on Fast Market coming up today at 12, Kevin? We're getting another look at the U.S. consumer, like folios, on American Express. Uh, and there was the U.S. We're cover Intel, and we're going to cover Western Digital today. A good look at, at chips and semiconductors, and then, of course, the U.S. consumer, Tommy. Nice. And Intel, man, uh, these chip stocks, of course, uh, quite a rally off of the lows, man, of last year, 25 bucks up to about 50. Kevin, I appreciate the time on a busy morning, man, full of economic data and earnings. We don't talk to you tomorrow, so I can't wait to talk to you on Tuesday, man. Always so much happens between that Thursday and that Tuesday. But I appreciate the time and we'll be watching at 12 o'clock today. Kevin, have a great weekend and we'll talk to you tomorrow, man. Thanks for having me on. Have a great weekend, Tommy. Have a great weekend. Folks, check it out. You heard it. They're talking three great stocks, American Express, Intel, and Western Digital coming up at 12 noon. I always mention it, folks. I've learned so much from Kevin, the team over the years at Schwab Network, the program they put together, the hypothetical trades that they walk you through. And this is the time to check out the program, folks, because you get equities moving every single day. You get economic news with the ECB talking as I came on the air, right? We didn't even touch on them. There's so much going on in this market right now. And yeah, um, we'll see what happens with Tesla on the open. As Kevin has mentioned many times, right? Uh, we really find out what happens when the opening bell hits, when we find out where supply and demand 
Econ 101, folks, okay? Where does that supply curve and that demand curve meet? Where is the price going to end up? And we find out on the open, but a tough go around. And yeah, as Kevin said, right? Sounds like, and I'm in the same camp, man. I did not listen to that earnings call, but it sounds like he did not do a great job on that earnings call of telling the story, at least, that he wanted to tell as you have that earnings call beginning at about 200 and you're at about 189 right now. Now, keep in mind, you know, those words I use, um, Dan Ives, Wedbush, he's still a bull. He still believes in EVs. He still puts a 315 price target on this thing. So even if you're bearish, folks, okay, keep those bear claws nice and sharp because I think in the longer run, this equity is still going to have a lot of fans, especially if you get a pullback. But in the short term right now, they got some issues going forward, to put it lightly. You got Tesla down about 17 bucks to kick things off. We got Boeing shares. They're going to be down as well, about 6 bucks to kick things off. We got a lot of action, man. We got Comcast out there, basically flat after their numbers. We're going to jump around. You got Southwest trading higher, up to about 32 bucks. We got the S&Ps up by 19. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back right after the break for the opening bell. Don't go away. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. .com. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You're looking at an S&P up by about 17 points right now. We get a little bit of a sell on the open. We got the NASDAQ 100 up by 86, the Dow up by 69 points, and the Russell charging higher up by 1.4% right now. Bitcoin back above 40,000, but barely. Crude continuing to rise. Crude, 76.54, man. And we are getting above that 75 price point. Check it out, right? We're at higher levels than we have seen since... Looks like the week of December 1st. No, that is December 1st, the day of. Almost two full months. You had the high out there from December 26, 76.18. We're above that high now. We're chopping around, and you're talking about the higher level, 77.50, maybe $80 as we climb above that $75 price point in crude. That had been a little bit of a barrier for some time. Talking to our man Teddy Cakes at yesterday, we were talking about that as well. Kevin laid it out, right? Pretty interesting that what do you have? Higher price, lower yield. We get a little bit of a reversal there. Watch yields today, okay? Because yields are going to be an important one. What does it do on this type of data in terms of yields? We're talking about a yield right now about 4.15%. 4.15%. Okay, let's put it on a 15 minutes so you can see where we've been this week. We're just back to where we were a week ago. Okay, that's right where we were about a week ago with a little bit of volatility in between. Sitting at 4.15% right now. You jump over to the dollar index. Dollar Climbing a little bit higher, 103.42. I got to listen to a, just the beginning of Christine Lagarde's speech at the ECB before I came on the air. She probably started talking at like 8.45 a.m. this morning, about 15 minutes before my program. And um, yeah, they got some dire predictions for the European economy, to put it lightly. Okay, I was listening quick, getting ready for the program. We just got so much data out this morning, right? Our GDP data out at 8.30. We have the ECB speaking 15 minutes later. We have earnings hitting the belt as well. Um, but boy, her words, when you, in, in contrast to the GDP numbers that we just got, hearing Christine Lagarde speak about Europe, their economy, their prognosis, they are in some tough shape, man, and we know it, but... Um, going to be interesting to see how the dollar goes from here with the strength that we have in this economy right now, to put it lightly. Okay, and talking about some of those GDP numbers real quick. So this is out from the journal this morning. What recession? Growth ended up accelerating in 2023. So we're just talking about the GDP numbers again for a quick moment here. Take a look at some of where we are in this chart, though, man. Pretty big numbers, right? GDP change from the previous quarter. 3.3% was the number we just had. That's on the heels of the 4.9% number we had last quarter. First two quarters of the year come in at 2.2 and 2.1. Now, do you remember the conversation of two? Do you remember it? I can't believe that's almost two years ago, okay? And it's about a year and a half, to be fair. But when we got two quarters of declining GDP numbers, the whole conversation about recession. That's the definition of a recession. It went both ways. Look at what we've done since then. 2.7, 2.6, 2.2, 4.9, .2, and 3.3. Just gangbusters on the heels of those two negative numbers in the beginning of 2022. Now, going forward, though, okay, you're going to be dealing with these comps. It's something to remember. The comps are important, okay? And we got to grow from here. 0.94 is the forecast for this quarter. 0.55, then 0.89, and 1.65. Kevin laid out a great case, man. Um, I ask him some difficult questions sometimes because I just like to get the, the, the thought process, right, of going along in these numbers. And it's, it's a great way that he summed it up, I think, in just talking about, you know, we're on our way back to 2%. But who says it stops there? That's the tough part about that, okay? If you believe we're on our way back down to 2%, because I was thinking about this, just his words, which is a very reasonable thought, right? What I'm trying to work myself through right now is what makes you think that you can be on your way back down to 2% and somehow you're gonna stop at 2%, right? That's the interesting part. So keep that in mind as we go forward here. Uh, when I saw these numbers here, it made me think of that as well. Now, check out this chart. How about consumer income and consumer spending? Kevin talked about it as well, right? Whew, look at these numbers, man. There's your COVID accelerations, okay? Spending dives, income goes up. Just magnificent in terms of where we were coming into those numbers. I mean, these numbers, man, okay? I mean, this is so, so time, time is amazing, folks, as we all know, okay? 
Um, and I just, I always go back to a period where we can relate in our minds, and it has nothing to do with politics, but when Trump was elected in November of 2016, which is crazy that that's eight years ago already, right? Crazy, but it is. Uh, the market was doing phenomenally well. I always bring this up in terms of the context of where we are, where we've been, okay? You back it up on the S&Ps, just for some context, to November of 2016, and this market was at about 2,200. We're at almost 5,000 right now, okay? But it's remarkable to think that from that time, and everybody was doing very well at that time. Remember, okay, if you you know, didn't like Trump, you said he's getting all the credit because he was handed an economy that was doing so well on the heels of that rebound from the 2008 crisis. Nonetheless, look at these numbers, man. Personal income at that time was 16 trillion. We're now at 23 trillion. Amazing, you've almost gone up 50% in personal income over that time and spending has kept, uh, has kept toe as it's been a much bigger percentage because look at this. Spending 12.8 to almost 19. Pretty close, but a slightly larger percentage. Just staggering numbers, man. And uh, yeah, if that keeps persisting, it is going to play out. But this article hints to some of what Kevin was talking about here, talking about there are signs. Um, the whole economy won't be able to continue at such a rat rapid clip. You're talking about forecasts, right? We just went over the GDP forecast somewhere right there. You're talking about um, higher credit card spending. Kevin talked about the savings in there. Keep that in mind as we go forward because they are important factors, of course, going forward. All right, a couple interesting articles I found out here that I just wanted to touch on from the journal. This one's interesting. We're always talking about real estate. I'm always thinking about Florida real estate as well. And we're going to talk about insurers after the next break. All right, we're going to talk a little bit insurance after the next break, folks. But this one's talking about um, building. And I think you're going to see more of these play out, man, because I was reading this. I was saying, where are these? These look pretty attractive, man. St. John's, Florida. Um, they got Florida, they got Texas in there, a couple nice areas where you're close to the ocean, but maybe 17 miles away, right? Somewhere where you're a little bit further. <coughs> but what do they got? This is the new deal. And boy, it looks like an attractive deal, man. Um, building little lagoons, little giant pools, 14 acres, 37 million gallons of water, and courting home buyers for that process. Now, where's this one here? Um, Let's see. Uh, I'll find it. They're all in Florida and in Texas right now. Yeah. Most of them in Florida and in Texas. Developers pouring money into enormous lagoon pools. I mean, check out some of these visuals, folks. This is a pretty cool spot when you think that you're landlocked and somehow you got a lagoon that almost you look out, you got some sand, you got some beach. If you got kids, you got kids on there. Um, you got a nice little golf cart community. I mean, look at some of these visuals, right? I think this is going to become more of a mainstay. Listen. Being in Central Florida, folks, I'm in Lakeland. I've talked about the developments. We had a 1,700 house development getting built next to us, man. There used to be beautiful cow fields, 1,700 houses. This is gonna be happening everywhere in Florida and Texas, and I think that's gonna be the new deal. We're gonna talk a little bit of insurance. We'll talk uh, travelers. We'll talk some of those insurance companies as they're making TFNN highs. We'll TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. 
for daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities. Subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps, all the markets just kind of hanging out where we kicked off the trading day with the S&Ps up by about 18 points right now. NASDAQ gives it up a bit. We're up by 80. The Dow catches a slight bid. We're above 38,000. And the Russell backs off from the highs, but we're still up by 1.1% right now. So I mentioned we're going to talk a little bit of insurance companies. Are you aware what the longer term? And listen, we got, I'm very fortunate, TFNN very fortunate in terms of our listener base. Um, a lot of our listeners, right? You guys out there, the viewers, you're in tune with the market. You're watching it every day, whether you're trading, whether you're investing, whatever it is, you're aware of what's going on. But I don't think a lot of people would be aware with the insurance crisis that is going on in my state, Florida, in many states, okay, and across the country of what these charts look like for these companies. Are you seeing this chart, folks? This is travelers. How's this look for this equity? Are they doing okay? You think they're okay? because the country isn't okay when it comes to insurance right now. These companies are regulated for a reason, and it's probably a good time to take a look at all of them, okay? Because look at these charts and look at the pain that people are facing when it comes to insurance, okay? This is Travelers, and this comes from the Wall Street Journal. They're getting me fired up this morning. They got a good article talking about the insurance companies and how they're raking in profits um, as customers pay soaring premiums. Now. Premiums can go up, folks, and they should go up when we're dealing with higher costs from climate change, storms, inflation, et cetera, okay? But if they're going up in tow and step in tow, you know, in, in lock with, with the costs, then the share price shouldn't be soaring. But what you have happening is you have the insurance companies, okay, getting rid of everybody that actually needs insurance, only accepting money from people that aren't going to need insurance to the degree that they're paying to cover it, and so they're raking in the profits. Now, that's travelers, and I'm putting it lightly, of course, okay? You jump over to progressive, PGR is their symbol. Pretty similar chart, okay? This thing has been a one-way rocket ship since 2016 at a time when we've been dealing with some real problems in insurance, okay? Now, if you're unfamiliar, folks, I got back money from my insurance company, and I'm trying to remember, I'm pretty sure it was from Progressive during the pandemic, okay, for my auto insurance. I have Progressive auto insurance. I've had it for a very long time, and I got money back during the pandemic because as part of their regulations, and I think it was them, it might have been my health insurance, okay, who's through Blue Cross Blue Shield, but I got money back 
because the regulation said, it might have been the health insurance, that they can't keep something like, you know, X percentage that they made so much money that they actually had to give it back legally. OK, that's what was happening during the pandemic. Now, let's bring over the article to, to tee you up to got, what got me excited this morning about these insurance companies. And listen, living in Florida, folks, OK, this is one of the biggest risks to our housing market, to everything going on right now in terms of rising insurance, a huge problem. Uh, in Florida. Insurers rake in profits as customers pay soaring premiums. I said, I got to check out that one. Uh, uh, we didn't even get to Allstate yet, right? Travelers, Allstate, Progressive, reach records after big rate increases here. And regulators better stay on top of this, folks, okay? Because this is how it goes. I remember my dad talking about this 10, 15 years ago, man, that insurance companies actually love it when they get hammered because what's it let them do? It lets them raise the prices, they reap the profits, they kick out everybody they don't want to cover. And then what happens? They make all the money, okay? Yes, that is what's happening. Uh, you have Progressive, first time ever, over 100 billion market cap. Allstate, which reports results next month. New highs this week, up more than 50% off their lows last summer, okay? They're coming back to profitability. That's what they're talking about here. After summer, suffering some of the worst years in their history, insurers say they now see a path to profitability for home and auto. Big rate increases are driving up revenue. Inflationary pressures that pushed up repair and replacement costs seem to be easing. Losses from extreme weather, they remain a wild card, but the short-term outlook seems to be favorable, okay? Potential for light at the end of the tunnel. I mean, these are the words, yet look at the stock prices, okay? Pay attention to the stock prices when you're figuring out everything else. Now, insurers kick their higher, kick their rates higher, let me start that again. Insurers kick their rate hikes into high gear in 2023, which has been thrilling to investors, <laughs> not for the consumers, but for everyone who has to buy coverage, it's been very difficult, all right? And this is what they talk about here. North Carolina, home insurers asked for a 42% increase in premiums, including near doubling the rates for flood-prone coastal counties. Well, that's a whole other conversation in terms of whether we should be insuring um, flood-prone coastal counties where you just keep getting decimated and we keep rebuilding. You're going to talk about home insurance up to 6,800 from 3,400, okay? This isn't a national problem, man, at, at a grand scale. <coughs> Yeah, nationally, rates are set to keep climbing. Travelers, we just looked at them, right? Insurers' premiums are likely to increase in the low double digits percentages for home insurance renewals this year and in the mid-teens for drivers renewing policies through June. And yeah, what happens, right? What do they talk about here? Consumer advocates say the industry's rate request can be a one-way street, and it should be more than just consumer advocates, folks. It should say, this should be, okay, and this is me adding my, my take, but that's say it's my program, man. I'm, of course I'm going to add my take, all right? It should say, reasonable individuals, not consumer advocates, reasonable individuals say the industry's rate request can be a one-way street. Policyholders are punished when insurers incur losses, but get little relief when they swing back to profitability. And I'm going to have to look at that. The more I think about it, I think it was the health insurance that I actually got a kickback there. And maybe that's a part of Obamacare they can't keep. It says something like, um, anyway. During the pandemic, for instance, auto insurers raked in outsized profits as people stayed home and got fewer car crashes. Only one of the top auto insurers car raised by more than 10% in the two years through 2021. Since then, 10 companies have won regulatory approval to boost auto insurance rates by more than 20% in 16 states. Two-year increases topped 30%, including 45.5% in Texas, 39% in Ohio. Our politicians should be doing something about this, folks, okay? This is not political. It shouldn't be. There's no reason why you should have these equities soaring to higher prices across the board. Um, yeah, and my dad's saying, no way it was the car insurance. He's right as I talk it through it. It was my health insurance. So I pay for private health insurance through Blue Cross Blue Shield, and I got a kickback for my health insurance during that. Did not get it for auto insurance. I think he's right there. Um, and that's what they're talking about, of course, in these. I mean, there's no pullback here. Right. The, the acceleration is just a one way trip. So for what it's worth, folks, pay attention because this one's not stopping anytime soon. And we're just at the beginning of the ramp up. Last month, Allstate won approval for auto insurance rates to increase 30 percent in California, 17 percent in New Jersey, 15 percent in New York. The company had threatened to stop renewing policies in those states after suffering losses. OK, I get it. Right. But check out the charts. 
remember the charts when you hear these conversations about how hard things are in the insurance companies. Remember the charts. As people in the markets, right, if you're talking to people outside of the stock market, remind them of what some of these charts look like. I don't think many people know what a lot of these charts look like for these equities as we are suffering an insurance crisis in this country, man, as we go forward. All right, we'll come back. We'll talk some equities. We'll take a look at some of the equities coming out with their numbers after the bell tonight. We're going to look at Intel when we get back, folks. We got the S&Ps up by 18 right now. And as we come into that break, we got Intel shares up by a percent, 49.61. One more segment. We'll be right back, folks. Don't go away. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at tfnn.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up by about 19 right now. We got the NASDAQ up by 58. And I was trying to look at that again. I think it was my health insurance that I got that refund from. Maybe I got a couple refunds, but I think this was it because I remember the 80% deal. The 80-20 rule requires insurance companies to rebate any excess premiums charged if they spend less than 80% of the premiums on medical care and efforts to improve the quality of care or at least 85% in the large group market. So, that was what I was thinking about, at least one of them. I may get a couple. So what you had is you, you didn't even, have, you know, insurance companies accepting premiums, right? And they're not even spending 80% of that money on the coverage for the premiums they're taking in. 
And as a part of the regulation, they had to give that money back. And so that was happening everywhere during the pandemic. And now, of course, they're just reaping all the benefits. Pay attention to those charts, man. Remember those charts of those companies when you hear how many problems they're having right now. You jump to Intel. We take a longer term look at Intel. They're out with their numbers after the bell tonight. You jump over to Intel, up about two thirds percent with the market higher. You jump over to the Analyze tab. The market looking for about a $3.43 move in either direction. We jump over to the option profile, so if you're looking for action through tomorrow, about a $3.60 move either direction, and that's going to put options at about a buck eighty-five on the bullish or the bearish side if you want to make a directional play. Um, about at the money is forty-nine fifty. so if you're looking at calls, you're looking at a buck eighty. you're looking for puts, you're looking at about a buck eighty there on Intel coming up with their numbers after the bell. And as we finish it up, let's jump around to some of the magnificent seven. Apple shares, they're flat so far, slightly in the green. Microsoft, up half a percent. Boy, Microsoft, man, they are strong. NVIDIA shares, up 1.1 percent. 620 bucks, man, it never ends. AMD, look at that, makes a new high at 184 on the open. We check in on Tesla. Yeah, no real bid. They got a slight pop on the open, but down 9%. Short term, be careful of Tesla shares. And we jump over to Boeing. Yeah, watch out for Boeing, man. Boeing back near that 200 number. All right, folks, stay tuned. We got a man, Basil Chapman. He's coming up next with the Tiger Technicians Hour. Great day of programming coming up, folks. I look forward to talking to you tomorrow morning. We're going to get that personal consumption expenditure. 8.30 a.m. tomorrow. I'll be on the air at 9. Don't go away, folks. We got Basil Chapman. He's coming up next. Have a great Thursday, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.